Hey there, it's Derek from Pacific Coast Auto here in Japan. We're looking at a Subaru Forester XT-TB. I think that's how you're supposed to say it. Anyway, it's a EJ20 turbocharged Forester. This one here has a five-speed manual transmission, a few extra commercial parts, and 113,000 kilometers. We're going to be sending this one over to Canada. And this is a post-purchase review video, so we're going to take a look at the condition of the vehicle and compare it to the vehicle's inspection sheet. Now this one has a pretty big problem, well, pretty big oversight from the inspection, and I'll point that out right away. Normally we wouldn't see something like this, it does happen from time to time. There's rust on the roof here. Looks like it'd be pretty easy to tell that there's rust on the roof. Now luckily it's not heavy rust, this is surface rust. Should be very easy to fix that for a body shop, but it would involve repainting of the roof. Now, repainting the roof on this is better than on some cars because you do have these rails that extend all the way, so you don't have to blend anything, you just paint the whole thing. But that's neither here nor there. It is really sucky that they missed that. Anyway, engine only condition is good. The category of the vehicle is good other than the AC not working. And the body is very good. The suspension, is sitting a little bit weird. You'll see the rear is down lower than the front is. Okay, so that's a kind of an overview of it. Now let's uh, close the hood here. I did check the oil in the coolant. There's some rust on this kind of catch tray uh, for the coolant. Oil looked like it was okay. Probably a good idea to get the oil and coolant changed. Is that the original um, intercooler? I'm not sure. It kind of looks a little bit bigger from what I remember, but it has been a while since we've bought one of these. It does say STI on it, so maybe it's an upgrade. Also, it's Samco Sport. There we go, that's aftermarket. Also, the zero point intake tray, a tube here. The front camera brace is from Cusco, and there is a master cylinder stopper here that's giving you better pedal feel than the original. And it does actually make a difference, make your uh, pedal a lot firmer. This is sagging off. Okay, and the original ducting there, sometimes people put an aftermarket ducting piece onto it. But take, take a look. This ducting is small-ish, right? A lot smaller than the intercooler. Maybe it is an aftermarket one. Maybe it's an intercooler from a different version of the Impreza. Because the Forester really is like a station wagon Impreza. Even though they do make a station wagon Impreza. And it's not much difference in size. Kind of weird that Subaru would do that. Legacy, Forester, and Impreza Wagon all have an awful lot of crosshairs. Okay, close this up and uh, just uh, tuck this in while it's coming down. Alright, there we go. But I have to say, the Forester is a great vehicle for Canada because it can be your sports car in the summer, it can be your winter vehicle because of the four wheel drive. It has a good amount of space, lots of cargo space in the back, and they drive really well for being a kind of crossover like vehicle. I hate to use the term crossover because Forrester predated the term crossover, but that's essentially what we have here, a tall wagon. Okay, this is the second generation of the Forrester. I'm trying to think back. Yeah, I believe it's the second gen, but there was a pretty big uh, visual difference in between the early and late model of the first gen. So I'll go ahead and translate this as the 2002 Forester XT-TB four-wheel drive. This is an auxiliary four, interior B, exterior B. I'd say that that's pretty accurate, um, other than maybe this could be a 3.5, but rust on the roof, mm, I don't know how much you're uh, going to discount the grade because of that. 113,495 kilometers, it comes with aero parts, drive recorder, you can actually see it right there. You might be able to take out a card if it does have a card in it, which it doesn't. That's a shame. Sometimes you can see where the last person was driving, kind of interesting. Uh, aftermarket 18 inch wheels, HID headlights, five speed manual, four wheel drive turbo, and original alloy wheels are inside the vehicle. They're not really something that you want to keep. These wheels that are on it are flashy looking, but they do have a bunch of corrosion on them and they're not a higher end wheel than just a you know a, a cheap 18 inch wheel that you can get that's why you'll see stuff like corrosion on them early okay now the report here says underside surface rust it looks fine to me door mirror scratch very scratches and dents and then around here everything looks okay it says one on the front wheels that's a little bit incorrect what 
one here is in reference to one millimeter of tread and five millimeters of tread on the back. It really is five all the way around, or maybe even less than that, four or three. But the front left one here has worn itself out on the outside. It's only this tire that's doing that. You can see it's worn smooth. So if you do want to check your front suspension, this might have something to do with the suspension being too tall. Having a look at it from here, easy to see that, right? It looks like the rear suspension is about the height that these normally have. And then the front suspension is up too high, but it is the original suspension. And so really, I don't know. If it were my car, a set of coilovers on it, that'll fix it. You can set the height to whatever you want then. And that is everything other than AU2 on the back bumper there and nothing mentioned on the roof. Okay, now we'll go around once. I'll point out a few other things after I'm done that so that you can take a look at it. Okay, the Forester is uh, roughly about the same size as the, um, actually in terms of length, it's shorter than a Legacy, but taller. And then it's longer than an Impreza hatchback. I believe all of them are roughly the same wheelbase. I don't actually know. Come to think of it, that is something that I'd like to know. So maybe I'll look it up. Somebody in the comments knows that. There's always somebody that knows something. Okay. So that's stock rear spoiler, stock roof rails on it. Everything visually here appears to be stock. And it's uh, quite a nice bit of kit. I, I like the front lip, back canards, not canards, spats, maybe you want to call them. Oh, I'm getting stuck in branches and stuff. Hmm, this fall. Side skirts. A nice design. All right, let's just pull around here and then we'll start talking about details. So first, firstly, the front bumper lip is not seated exactly on there the way that it should be. You can see it's a little bit coming off. If you look at it uh, closely, there are some scuffs and things that were touched up with touch-up paint. And it's pretty easy to see. Now you can take this lip off if you want, and then you just don't have the lip. You still have the bumper. But underneath the lip, if it has hit something and come misaligned, you probably have some damage to the underside of that bumper as well. You get fog lights. They're good. A little bit of yellowness in the headlights. Yellowness. And then we have uh, front bumper, rear bumper, hood scoop, mirrors, and rear spoiler are all a little bit less glossy than the rest. It's pretty common for plastic parts to do that. And you can do something like a ceramic coating on it to bring that back up. It's just not going to last as long as a typical clear coat. Okay, the wipers have wiper heaters and the windshield surround has cracked. I think this happens because Japan is really dry in the winter and really humid in the summer. And so sometimes stuff like this tends to happen. The shrinking and expanding. So there's that. Maybe you can see that, maybe you can't, but it's very easy to see in real life along there as well. And this bottom one here too. Okay, so a little bit of a scratch on the mirror there, but side panels are all really good. There are two things on this side. I'm not gonna be run over. You will not get me a Nissan Serena. You will not get me. Serena's the name of Sailor Moon. But in Japan, her name is Usagi, which means rabbit. So her name is basically rabbit. And part of the reason for that, maybe, I'm just uh, going out on a limb here, is because in Japan, you know how they say there's a man on the moon? In Japan, they say it's a rabbit making mochi. Like uh, you take a hammer and you hit rice and it turns into like a gooey material. And so here's the other scratch there. So maybe Sailor Moon because she comes from the moon, is actually the rabbit on the moon, because her name is Rabbit. But it's actually Usagi. That is your uh, Sailor Moon education for the day. Here's the AU2 on the back bumper. Okay, so it's pressed in and then come out, and then the paint is a little bit damaged. And like the front, you also have a gasket peeling along here. Okay, this side is cleaner. Then the other side, the other one has basically those two scratched areas, but the handles have multiple fingernail scratches in and around them. Okay, 
And then we'll look at that bust again. And a shark fin has been put on. Maybe we can get some focus. Come on. Come on. Do it. There we go. Okay. Open the door. The interior. I would say that the interior is probably better than the exterior. A little bit. So maybe we can call the exterior a C, but the interior B seems right. There's no bad smell inside, no heavy cigarettes. There are certain cars that uh, are more prone to be smoked in than others. I find Foresters are a little bit more prone to be smoked in than your average car. Maybe a Celsius a little bit less. High Aces, like that, quite a bit more. Any sports car is more likely to be smoked in. Okay, all right. So Subaru is good about seats. The bolstering on the seats is nice and thick and you feel good when you're sitting in it. You can adjust this section up and down. Okay, just a single pivot point there. I always keep mine in the lowest down because I'm used to cars from the 80s, Japanese cars from the 80s, where you almost sit on the floor. The steering wheel doesn't have any peeling, even though these steering wheels are prone to peeling. And it's a Momo unit. Okay, headlight levelizer, which you're going to need now because your suspension's a bit messed up. And then fog light on there. Has aftermarket STI pedals. That's a nice little bonus. Okay, coming in here, Subaru standard three gauge set there. Okay, the AC not working was not mentioned on the auction sheet. That seems to be a fairly common thing to be missed on the auction sheet. I'm not entirely sure why. Very simple controls for your AC. Has an aftermarket stereo head unit here. Has uh, one of the coolest, Legacies also have this, one of the coolest cup holders. Oop. And then away and then one more cup holder down there this has uh, proper bushings in here not weak ones that lots of Subarus tend to get over time and needs a good vacuum okay let's uh let's go to back seats here back seats are about the same in all of the Subarus these cars are so similar to one another okay it does have anchors for the isofix if you have car seats and so that's good these fold down on top of the cushion to give you a semi-flat surface for the rear here's a look at the front from the back okay headliner is uh well fairly clean a couple of areas a little bit dirty okay and let's go see the trunk that has the wheels in them and this is a common question that we get from people is uh, can you send inner cargo in the vehicle? And the answer is no. So these original wheels, not that good looking. They are 17s, I'm guessing. Let me see. Mm -hmm. 16s. Okay. They have tread on the tires, but they do look like a really old tire on there. And then there's a tarp in here, and the port's going to throw these out for us if we don't. So when you get a car that has tires inside, we can change two of these tires if you want. You have to pay for that, of course. And then uh, it's really up to you. So if you're the owner of this, let me know if that's what you want. And let me know quickly, because we usually move these cars out as soon as we can. We have another car coming today, and we only have three spaces left. So, And today's Thursday. We've already bought three cars in the morning. I haven't checked the afternoon yet. OK, so I think that's everything for this one. I hope you enjoyed the walk around. If you have any questions, then let me know. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and have a nice day.